Welcome back. So let's try another test. Now, right now we've tested that our method actually calls these things and we've tested that, well, we can even run the test, right? But let's start testing that actually when we do get some data back, that is actually converted into what we expect, which is actually ending up as a product right here with these three specific properties and nothing else. So that's what we're going to start testing in the next couple of lessons. But notice right here, there's a lot of data that we're getting from Firestore, some kind of action with some kind of payload, with some kind of document that has an ID and some data method and stuff like that. There's a lot going on right here. We need to kind of make a way to test that. We don't wanna make a setup of Firestore because we expect that Firestore, Angular Fire 2 tested that themselves. So we just wanna fake that whenever we're calling snapshot changes, we should return a list of actions, either zero to, uh, I don't know, 100, if you wanna test it, that contains some kind of action set that has a payload with some information. So that's what we're going to do this lesson. We're going to create a helper that can deliver this kind of data for us whenever I actually call this snapshot changes so I can figure out if my function actually does what I expect it to do. Okay, so let's try and create that right now. So first of all, jumping back to our tests, I want a helper, right? So we're going to the bottom of the class, just like we did last um, for the actual test of the product list component, we're going to create just a helper class. I'm just going to call it helper again, very simple name. Now the helper is going to contain some kind of doc set, or actually it could be an action set right here. And that action set is just going to be an array right now. And it's just going to be an any array a equal just an empty array for now. So that's how we're going to start it. Now the action is going to need a way for me to kind of create a list of items right here. Let's just make a new line there. So it's going to, we're going to somehow be able to get a list of actions. So let's just call get actions right here. That's a new function we'll create. And we're just going to like we did last, how many do you want to create? We want a, some kind of amount here, right? That's going to be a number in type. So that's just how many we want to create of these actions. So what are we going to do with the helper? Well, we're actually going to try for each of the amount, so we're going to make a for loop right here. For, we're going to start out with a let i equals zero. We're going to say as long as we're less than number, we're going to create these, or amount, sorry. Uh, very, very simple, basic stuff right here. We'll do an i plus plus there to count up. Now, what does it complain about? Not a lot. We need a white space right there. So now we have a loop that we can run over and say for each of the items that we're getting, let's return something. Now, our action right here needs to return an an action array right here is going to return an array of something. So it's an observable with an array of any inside it. Now I won't specify what this is right now because I don't want to be limited to putting in only the amount that I want to test right now. So this is going to be an any array that we're going to return in the end. I could, let me try and show you. I could start being very specific and use type safety here. And I could actually say what we're going to return is document change actions. But if I kind of specify this, there's a lot you have to consider. So if you open this guy, there's a payload, uh, which is this specific type. There's this specific type. If I go into this guy, the payload needs to be this specific type. And I start really diving into the Firestore setup and there's just too much I have to specify. That's why I decided I don't need to specify exactly what I'm getting back as actions. I just want to use anything. I don't care. I'm going to make an object that only contains what I need right now, which is a payload with a document with some data method and an ID. That's all I need for now. So that's why I'm using the any, if you guys were kind of concerned why I use that instead of being type safe. I don't want to be type safe right now because I don't want to end up having to specify every property that exists on these actions right here. Good. So the final thing I want to do with the action is I can just return again an off statement right here and the off statement is just going to return that list of actions that we just created. Actions. There we go. So that's that's kind of what I want to do right here. Very, very, very simple. Just like we did with the helper inside the component list up here. Good. So how do we actually create these actions? Well, again, I want to make it very specific. That's exactly what I need is this right here per action. So let's try and jump back. I'll just copy this put it in here just so you guys can easily see what I'm actually trying to create right here. And there we go. Just paste that in there. So it's going to need a bit of, it's going to need, an action is going to need some kind of a payload, right? So that's the first thing we'll do. We'll say, we want what do we want? Well, we want to actually, for each amount, we're going to, in the actions, this actions, we're going to push a new variable, uh, sorry, a new object. And that object is going to contain some specific properties, right? The first thing the object need is a payload. I know that because it says payload right here. So I'm going to need a payload, oops. And that payload is going to be something with a duck inside. 
DOC, right? So I'll add that dock right here. Okay, what else does it need? Well, the dock is an object itself because that has a method called data and it actually has an ID. So let's just start with the ID. Now my ID is going to be just a symbol ABC plus the I, all right? So there we go. Now we have a way to just get some unique IDs that just kind of counts up for each of the amount that I want to build. The second thing I need is some kind of duck, which is actually, uh, sorry, a data method right here. So let's create a data method. You do that by saying data, you put in the uh, parentheses because there's no parameters, and then you put in fat arrow like this, and you put in curly brackets. Now that's actually a method. Now this guy is going to return something. It seems he's going to return the actual product. So let's just add the product right here for now. And that product is actually going to contain a name and a picture ID. So let's just put that in there. The product is going to return, uh, let's just call it ABC, that's the name, plus I again. And then the picture ID is just going to be um, DEF plus I. This is just bogus values that I put in myself. And that's it. So now we've actually created a fake payload that we can use later on, right? So let's just get rid of all this nonsense down here again. So we have a full featured payload right here. Let me show you that again. So I've made a very simple helper right here. Let's just hide that guy as well. A very simple helper that has a list of these actions that I'm going to need to kind of test. Again, I don't care what Firebase returns, to be honest, or Firestore. It's not my problem. I expect from the documentation that this is what it returns. So I expect that Firestore or Angular Fire 2 knows this is the data, this is the payload that I should return, right? That's the expectation I have. I'm not here to test Angular Fire 2. I'm here to test my service, right? So that's why you can do stuff like this and feel good about it. So now we're getting back some kind of actions right here with a specific setup with a payload, with a document, with some ID and some data method. And again, if you look at the service, you'll know why I'm doing this because I expect that each of my actions are going to contain a payload with a document with a data function, right? And a payload with a document with an ID. So that's the data that I'm going to use for my tests. So now what do we need to do? Well, we need to do it so that our snapshot changes should actually instead return this, these actions right here instead of right now where we're just returning an empty array. So let's just jump back to the spec file to show you guys. If I go to the very top right here, you'll notice that right now when I'm calling snapshot changes, I'm actually returning just an empty array. We're going to change that in the next lesson and we're going to start testing that. Depending on what we return, we'll get the specific values. So that's it for this lesson. Now you guys know how to create a helper and that it's okay sometimes to use any if you don't want to be too specific about what you're actually defining inside your test files. That's it. See you next time. Bye-bye.